Hello and welcome to a new video, something different this time. No flying today, but relating to aviation. Behind me is the PNM Aviation Quick R, and I've owned this since 2018. And the aircraft's aptly named, as you might know, Sparkles. Now, Sparkles was fitted with an EFIS, an electronic, uh, don't remember what it stands for now. EFIS, it's on the screen. Anyway, it didn't have a fuel flow sensor installed with it. So today we're going to install it. And this is it here. So I'll walk you through some of the steps, but not all of the steps as to how we can do this. And this should give me a better idea of what the fuel consumption's doing. Um, I'm estimating we should be seeing 15 liters per hour. Um, and if that changes during flight at any stage, we know something's changing in the engine and it shouldn't change on cruise, of course. So it should be a handy tool to have while we're flying and should also give us better estimates uh, as to how much fuel's remaining, as opposed to trying to look at the fuel gauge and guesstimating that, you know, fuel gauges aren't always, not very accurate at all, actually. So with that in mind, hopefully knowing and having a good fuel flow sender unit to tell us how much fuel we're burning per hour should give us a really good idea on how much endurance we have remaining before we need to land to refuel. So let's get stuck into it and have a look at what we have to do to make this work. CF. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. OSM. Go. <clears throat> LA safety officer. Go. Rain, weather, clear to proceed. Go. See, this is the LD on channel one. Three. LC, you have permission to launch. One. The first thing we need to do is fit the appropriate jet into the fuel flow sensor. And I've selected jet number two, as seen here. And that's selected because it gives us the right fuel flow range. And I'm including, like for takeoff, maximum fuel burn should be about 25, 26 litres per hour, down to idle, which would be, I'm guessing, about five, six litres per hour. And the two millimetre fuel sensor and you'll need to work this out for your own engine, but the two millimeter sensor number two sh uh, jet should be the right one for this application. And make sure it's fully home. So I think that should do. Six mil bit, drill bit, push the jet inside, good to go. In order to gain access to the R deck, as it's called, we'll need to remove the seat, the side cover, and we should have access to the RDAX installed underneath the seat. And that would be in here. As you can probably see down here. Let me just pan down. That's it there. What we might also have to do is replace some of the fuel line um, because the fuel flow sensor uses eight millimeter fuel line. And that should already be installed on the aircraft, but that's a few, there's a few things that I need to check to see uh, what's going to work and what's not going to work. Having said that, I've got a car full of tools and I've brought everything I can think of as a contingency plan to try and make things work the way they need to work. I've already studied the installation wiring connections and the setting up of the fuel flow on the EFIS itself. So uh, that shouldn't be too much of a difficulty. It's just a matter of getting the fuel lines correct and um, finding a good place to mount the fuel flow sensor itself. The sensor must be located where there's no engine vibration. So I'm thinking of attaching it to the engine frame with some, um, some hose really, cable tied to the frame to isolate some of the vibration and see how that goes. Every aircraft of course is gonna be different. And as I said, one of these lines might have to be shifted over to a eight millimeter hose. All right, well, I thought it was time to give you an update. I've been working away here for a little while. I had a coffee with someone before, so progress has been slow. As you saw, it's been raining a little bit. Certainly isn't flying weather. Bit of a squall coming through. We've had some really interesting weather lately. Storms and everything. It's humid and hot, not a good day for flying. Great day for doing work on an aircraft. So let's have a look and see where I've got up to. 
So first of all, I found that my filter isn't really up to scratch. Um, the threads aren't holding it, so that's a bit of a risk. I'm gonna get another one because that one is just not safe anymore. And I'm about to do some wiring. So that's the next stage. I've got to put a new filter in that lower fuel line there. So I'll cut that there and put the filter in. And I've replaced the fuel line that uh, was meant to be eight mil. And that now runs up to all the way through to the uh, fuel pump. And I've managed to put the fuel flow sender unit up in here. So that will be, uh, it's now vibration isolated and should be easily accessible, um, all coming together. Well, the installation is now completed. We've got to now set up the EFIS and program in the K factor for the number of turns uh, the flow meter should make for one liter of fuel, which should be 7,000 turns, 7,000 pulses. Um, I've got to get a new fuel filter. I've got to put that in still. Otherwise, everything's going well. This will be the first turn on to see if uh, we can see the flow meter and uh, try and program it. I won't be able to start it up. I might be able to push it outside and run it, um, but I won't be able to calibrate it and check it because it's raining. We'll see how we go if we get some better weather. Let's go and program the uh, EFIS. Okay, there's the EFIS. Now, I'm not sure exactly. We've got to go into the menu menu and into EMS setup, into fuel setup, into flow one on. It's got a 7000 is already set up, um, two is off, mode is flow sender, what else is there? Injector, flow sender, so that's right. <laughs> that's all we have to do. Okay, well that's that. Have we got a display now on the screen? If we go to the engine management screen, we've got liters per hour indicated here. Wow. And where does it show on the other screens? Liters per hour there. And on here, liters per hour here. We've got time remaining and range. AQ, I don't know what AQ is. I'll go and get the fuel filter and we'll um, install that. Looks good so far. So we've got zero fuel flow and we'll start the engine. Clear prop. It does settle down, it, it was at 15 litres before. I'm not sure why it's reading high initially.
So 15.9. It might have some air in it and it might have time to settle down. And then it goes back to idle and the fuel usage increases. So we'll have to look further into that. We'll have to see what it does on cruise during a flight. But everything's now at operating temperature. So, um, all right, we'll call it quits. We'll put it away, I'm not flying this afternoon. But then again, I might. I might go and have a coffee first and see what I think. All right, thanks for watching. And goodbye. Well, I've been flight testing uh, just once and it's taken a while for me to get this video finished because we've had bad weather, I've been busy, I've got all sorts of excuses. It's been over three weeks since I flew, since I installed the uh, fuel flow sensor. So, and the video is long enough. So we thought, let's make this video a two-parter now. In the next part, I'm going to tell you uh, how the calibration's going. And we're going to fly that part now, actually, but uh, that'll come up in the next episode. Um, what else have we done? So, look, there's the fuel flow sensor. I've, I think I've fixed my antenna issues. I've been a bit suspect about the, um, the, the broadcast transmission power. And maybe the reception, the reception's been mostly okay, but I wasn't sure. But I think I did find a problem and I think it's now fixed. And that was after the first test flight that I've already done, that I uh, did that and checked it. And uh, today I'm gonna go out and prove it again. Today we're also gonna fly for about an hour. Uh, beautiful day for a change. And uh, it, yeah, we've just come into summer. It's now the 7th of December. 
2024. I'm in uh, Maryborough, Queensland and uh, Australia. So warm summer, 32, 33 degrees here today. It's now, um, what is it, half past five. So I'll go for about an hour and a half. So I've got the fuel flow sensor, the antennas fixed, I think, still testing. But I've got something else ingenious. And that's a camera system that I'll show you as well. All of that is coming up, all of those results and the fuel flow calibrations in the next episode. So tune in, stay watching, and we'll leave it here for now. I'm about to go for a fly and film the next episode. See you later.